Peace of the Lord be with you. And uh, good morning for our devotion for Thursday, July 16th. And I um, hope everybody's having a good day. Getting ready for uh, for the weekend coming up. So uh, It's morning, so we'll follow the morning order on page 295 in the hymnal. Our, our uh, reading for today is Psalm 19. And um, I've heard, I've heard if, you, if you know Psalm... Psalm 119, excuse me, I had to, had to think about that for a second. Um, you know, that, that's, that's this, the, Psalm 119 is this whole psalm dedicated to, to, the, um, to the Word of God. Every, there's sections, it's, it's an acrostic in, in the Hebrew alphabet, and, and each section has, it, it relates to, to a particular letter, and, and, but the whole thing is about the Word, right? You, you'll see in almost every verse, some um, synonym for, for the word. Judgments, rules, testimonies, word, uh, ways, statutes, you know, all, all these things. Um, so so one, Psalm 119 is this whole, the whole thing dedicated to that. Psalm 19 is kind of kind of like a little mini version of that, a little bit, at least especially uh, in, in verses 7 through 9. Um, but, but you see this, this dedication to, to that word of the Lord. Um, now I'm going to I'm going to draw out a little bit differently when I talk about it, but uh, but we'll, we'll uh, hopefully you'll see, especially in that section, that that kind of mini mini Psalm 119 view there. Uh, okay, well we'll go ahead and begin. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips. My mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. All right. Um, Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims His handiwork. Day to day pours out speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, there are no words whose voice is not heard. Their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the earth. In them he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom leaving this chamber, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens, and its circuit, circuit to the end of them, and there is nothing hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The rules of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned, in keeping them there is great reward. Who can discern his errors, declare me innocent from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins, let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, the heavens declare your glory and the sky proclaims your handiwork. Day to day, night to night, reveal your power and your majesty. There is no speech in them. There are no words whose voice is not heard. Their voice goes out to the whole earth. Their words to the end of the world it is in them. You have set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom leaving his chamber, and like a strong man running its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them. There is nothing hidden from its heat, and all of this shows your glorious power and majesty. And as we hear then your word, we hear all the more of your goodness. Your law is perfect, reviving our soul, your testimony making us wise in our simplicity. Your precepts giving joy to our hearts, your commands enlightening our eyes, the fear of you enduring forever, cleansing us, and your rules being true, good, righteous altogether. Lord, we ask that you would grant us hearts that always desire your word over and above gold, knowing that they are sweeter than honey and the drippings of honeycomb, that by them we are warned, and then in keeping them there is great reward. Blessed Lord, we are so sinful, who can discern our errors? Only you. We ask that you would declare to us 
or hidden faults, but also declaring us innocence from them because of your mercy, not because we have earned it, but by your Son, Jesus, and his blood. Keep us also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over us, that we would be, we would be blameless in your sight and innocent of great transgression. As we teach, as I teach today, Lord, grant us ears to hear and hearts to understand, but to let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. All right, so as we hear this, um, you could kind of hear in my prayer there, hopefully a little bit, uh, how I, I divided this up. One through six, these, these um, descriptions of, of nature. Right, um, the heavens declare the glory of God. The sky proclaims His handiwork. The day to day pours out knowledge. You know, just the the fact that there is day pours out speech, night to night, and His knowledge. You know, all of these things that we see, this glory of creation, all show His handiwork. Right, that God has made this. Um, it's it's really hard, I think, to look at the material world, to look at the intricacies of it, to look at the structure of um, order. I, I think I mentioned this before. Look at something like DNA, the order in DNA. To think that that came about randomly is, is to, to me, just unfathomable. You know, order does not come from chaos. Uh, order does not come about by um, random chance. You know, it just doesn't happen. You don't get, uh, you, you know, you don't throw a pile of letters out and, and, and have them order themselves into a book. Be lucky to have them order themselves into a word, let alone a, an entire book. And and so the, nature reveals that there is this creator. Um, day to day pours out speech. Night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech. There are no words. whose voice is not heard. The voice goes out through all the world. The world, the words to the end of the world. You know, all of this proclaims that there is a God who created it. Um, the sun and it's his journey. You know, I mean, you think about it. This is kind of um, not anthropomorphic, but you know, it's a, it's 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 a, it's a, a description of, of how it would have been perceived. This isn't this isn't the, the, um, you know, the 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 scriptures expressly denying that the the that the earth spins and, and, and you know that's how how you have the, the sun going around it. Um, you know, the, this is this is just imagery. In, in a way that people could understand, you look and the sun goes and he makes his circuit right around the, around the world. That that order shows a creator. Um, right? It doesn't just happen accidentally. As we hear all of this and we see God's majesty, we see God's power. You know, I touched on this uh, not too long ago in, in a devotion. We see all of that. What does that tell us about God? Well, it tells us that He's mighty us that he rules okay that's that's all fine but what does it not tell us about God it doesn't tell us that he's good we can maybe derive some understanding of his goodness from creation but it doesn't tell us that he's loving in particular right and that's where we have to have this revelation so then then you have that shift here from the, the, the revelation, the general revelation as we call it in creation, to revealed knowledge in, in, in the Word. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. And that, that word there, Torah, you, I'm sure you've heard the Torah, uh, the Hebrew word. Um, not explicitly law as in command, but revelation. The revelation of the Lord is perfect. The Word of the Lord is perfect. Reviving the soul, that word gives us life. As we, as we see that love that God has for us, in particular, as we see the love that He has for us as He rescues us from sin, death, and the devil in Christ, there it revives our soul. It gives new life to us. And you think about the context of this in the Old Testament. You know, the, the Israelites had been rescued out of the slavery from Pharaoh, and, and that would have been, uh, you know, reviving for them to know that God loves them and cares for them. But that happening in that revelation. Um, the same, the same for us. We are rescued from from the tyranny of, of that uh, oppressor of, of the devil, of sin, of, of death, um, reviving our soul in Christ. Right? Uh, the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. You know, the word there gives us wisdom. We're simple in our sin, as I said in the prayer. Now we now we have wisdom. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. You know, we see what God calls us 
to do as being right and good, and, and that gives joy to us. And we see the, the, the benefit of these things. And we see the benefit of the call to love God with all of our whole soul, heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. That's, that's good. Right? The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. You know, we, we are so clouded in our sin that we are impure. And here in the, the Word, we see true purity. We see true love. All of our love is tainted. It's tainted by things like a desire to be self-righteous. It's tainted by a desire to, to take care of ourselves first. It's tainted by a conscience that knows it's, it's not right before God. That doesn't mean that we won't try to, to, to excuse ourselves. You know, we won't, it's not, we won't try to pretend that that's not the case, but it's true. Our conscience is burdened. And, 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 um, and when we have the commands of the Lord, they enlighten our eyes that we could see exactly what that burden is and we have this Torah that shows us the release from that burden in Christ and the fear of the Lord is clean enduring forever you know there as we as we fear the Lord we know him we are cleansed and, and, uh, and we live we live forever in him the rules of the right Here we are. rules of the Lord are true and righteous altogether and that's um, you know what, what a what a blessing that we have the knowledge of truth of knowledge of right and knowledge of what is good in, in that. And here's a here's a one that one that, that should strike us. They are more to be desired are they than gold and much fine gold. How much would you sell your Bible for? Right? How much would someone have to pay you to not go to church? You know, and yet this word is to be desired more than gold, even much fine gold. You know, giving us insight into um, how, I mean, it accuses us, right? It's law. It's, it accuses us. But how joyous this gospel is that tells us of that life that we have in Christ. Um, and I didn't mention that with that word, you know, I, I kind of, I don't know if you saw I did that. There's law, you know, in, 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 in the seeing God in nature because the law comes and says God is powerful. That isn't gospel until you know that he's powerful for your benefit. So when then we hear this revelation of God, revelation of Christ, there is the gospel coming to us, showing us that mercy and enlivening us and giving us new, new life and, and that sort of thing, showing us that God's power actually is good for us because his power is a power of love. The old hymn from the 80s, that's the power of love, right? Um, verse 11, Moreover by them is your servant warned, and keeping them is great reward. You know, there we hear in that word uh, what what the warnings are, what we should not do, and and the, and the good things that uh, that come to us if um, if, we, if we do keep them. Now, uh, mind you, that doesn't mean that if we are perfectly obedient to God, that it's going to be roses on, in this life. Look at look at Christ. I mean, his life was not roses here, but eternity is uh, is much better, and, and that's you know that, that's where that's where the hope is. Um, who can discern his errors? Declare me innocent from hidden faults. You know this. Excuse me, this mirror of that law exposing us, our sins to us, and, and our prayer being that, that we would see those sins and know them and, and confront them and repent of them. And all that. Um, keep back also your servant from presumptuous sins. We wouldn't be presumptuous and overstep bounds and in, in, in pride and um, but, but to be humble, humble ourselves to the law and, and before one another. And uh, that we wouldn't, they wouldn't have them. They, they would not have dominion over us. Let them not have dominion over me. And there's kind of a connection to that baptismal text from Romans six: "Sin no longer has dominion over him." Right? Uh, the, the, the connection there. Um, then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. You know, when God restrains that sin from us, that, that blamelessness that we have in Christ, as Christ gives to us His righteousness. And then a wonderful, wonderful closing. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. And how would that be? Well, as we're meditating on that word, the words of our mouth being His word, the meditations of our heart, and meditations upon that word, that they would be acceptable in His sight. And He is our Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer, our Rock and our Redeemer, who has redeemed us from the uh, sorrows of sin and. Uh, given us new life in Him. Amen. All right, uh, we continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I uh, pray that you have a great weekend and uh, join us for our, our worship on Sunday. And um, God's blessings be with you.